Hi everyone, I'm Nick Olivo, and today I'm going to bring you behind the screen and let you see what it looks like when I set up a new campaign for my players in Roll20. Before we dive in, I'd just like to thank Roll20 for sponsoring this video. So, I'm about to start a Dungeons of Drakenheim campaign, and I'm really excited about this because this module has a great mixture of action, and intrigue, and eldritch horror. So what I'm going to do in this video is show you how I set up and organize all my materials. The maps, the handouts, the macros, and for those of you with pro accounts, I'll show which mods I always install for every game I'm going to run. So here we are inside my game, and the very first thing that I do is organize all my maps. You can see here I have created these folders, which correspond to the various chapters within the Drakenheim book, and then I put the maps that belong to that chapter inside the appropriate folder. Now, some modules will come with this sort of structure already created, but Dungeons of Drakenheim was released before the Roll20 map folder feature was officially released, so I just came through and did it myself. And it's real easy to do this if you've never done it before. You just click Add Folder right here, that gives you a new folder, and then it's a simple matter of just taking whatever page you want and dragging it right inside that folder. And there we go. We now see that new folder one has one map inside of it. Uh, I don't want that there, though, so I'm just going to drag it out and put it back in the all section. OK, so that's what I do for my maps. And I find that by breaking them out by chapter, it just makes it a lot easier to find the location that I'm looking for when I'm in a particular section of the book. So the Drakenheim module is broken out into each chapter here in the journal. And so now I know exactly which maps correspond to which chapter here in the system. The other thing that I'll do is create a blank page and name it token page. And this is literally just an empty page, but what's going to happen is when my players create their characters, I'll drag their tokens onto this page to do all the various setup. So if I add a new character right now and then just drag it onto the battlefield here, this is where I'll come to double click on the token and I can set up the various attributes that I want to assign. And for those of you with pro accounts, I do have mods that I use to automate this process and I'll show those in a little bit. But for right now, I have this page set up for these tokens. We'll close that and then over here in the journal I've set up a couple of special folders the vast majority of these things from monsters and NPCs on down came as part of the module but I've created a couple of other folders as well and this first one game info creatively enough contains information that my players may need about the game and so this first handout game resources lists out all the sources that I'm allowing in this game. The nice thing about this is these are all hyperlinked, so you can click on one, and then the resource is automatically displayed here in the game. Now, I want to add one more to this so you can see what this looks like, so I'm going to click Edit. I'm going to scroll down here, and I'm going to add in Sebastian Crow's Guide to Drakenheim, which is a bunch of Drakenheim-themed classes and spells. And then I also want to make this a hyperlink, too. So what I'm going to do is go over to the Compendium tab, and I'm going to type in Sebastian Crow's here. And here it is, Sebastian Crow's Guide to Drakenheim Expansion Rules. I'm going to click on this to open it up. And scroll up a little bit, and you'll find this hyperlink that says Source. Right-click on that and say copy link address and then we'll close this we'll highlight this line and we're going to add a link right here to what url should this link go to delete what's in there paste in the url you just copied and click insert and then when we save changes now and we click on that link it's going to open up sebastian crow's rules there we go. And so now my players have this handout and they can quickly access all the resources that they could use within the game. All right, let's pop back to the journal tab here. So that's game info. Safety tools lists out all of the safety tools that I use in my game. I actually have another video that I did that talks about the safety tools in more detail and also provides how to create a macro for those safety tools so that your players can easily access them. I'll put a link to that down in the video description. And then the house rules is just that. These are all the house rules that I employ during my games just so that everybody has access to them at all points in time and there's never any question about what they do. 
So I give all my characters a free feat at first level, I let them drink potions as actions or bonus actions, and I also allow flanking rules. We talk about what happens if a player isn't present for a session, we allow hero points, and I use the variant critical hit rule, and I also use a variant critical hit rule where instead of rolling two damage dice on a crit, you roll one damage die, and then you add the maximum amount of damage that die could do. And that basically just ensures that you never wind up rolling a two on a critical hit, because that's really depressing. And I've got another video that talks about how to set that up in Roll20. I'll put a link to that down in the video description as well. Okay, so that's house rules. And then I also have this items folder. And inside there right now is one handout called Party Loot. This handout is in all players' journals, and can be edited by all players. And the idea here is now the players have a place to track all of the loot that they found throughout the course of their adventures. And this is really handy because if the party finds equipment that maybe they can't use just yet, or they think is interesting but they don't want to use now, they can put that in this handout and then later on, when one of their characters decides that they want to try something different, or maybe if one of the characters dies, we get a new member of the party who maybe could use that equipment, they can come right in here, see what's available, and they're good to go. I've also created a folder called PCs, and this is where I'm going to store all my players' characters as we go through our adventures. The next thing that I do is import my GM helper sheet. This is a character sheet that contains a bunch of useful macros that I've created that I can easily transfer from game to game. And so all of these abilities that you see here are things that either help me automate prep for my game or automate various actions during the game. And again, I've got a whole video on this. I'll put a link down in the video description. Now, some of these are items I want to put on the macro bar down at the bottom of the screen like my GM Utils menu, which I'll show you in just a second. I want to put in the commands for group init and group check, which are mods, which would be limited to those folks who have pro accounts, but group init is going to let you roll initiative for a selected group of monsters, and group check is going to allow you to make saving throws for a group of monsters. Status is another mod-related action here, and what this is going to do is apply status effects like blinded or grappled to a token. Image allows me to display an image to players, and then I also want to put in my D2 and D3, and these just roll a D2 or a D3, which are really helpful when a monster can run up and attack one of two or three characters, and there's really no reason as to which one it would go after, and you just want to kind of randomly decide. So this lets you roll a D2 to choose between two players, or a D3 to choose between three players. Let's go ahead, let's close this, and if I go back to chat now and I press the utils menu, you can see now I've got all these other buttons that pop up which give me macros to create encounters using the encounter helper mod, I can modify the page lighting using the dynamic lighting tool mod, I can set up my PCs and NPCs tokens, I can create a marker, I can set up token actions, all these things can be done, and again, they're in that video that I referenced earlier. But now I've got all this set up. The other thing that I'll do is just rename these real quick if you right click on the buttons. And then we'll just call this a little bit, something a little bit shorter, GM Utils, group in it, and just so on, just to make these a little bit shorter and save some screen real estate. So there we go. So now let's talk about the mods that I've got loaded. And like I said, mods are limited to folks who have pro accounts. What you're looking at right here are all the mods that I load for all of my games. And the first two rows here in this section come from the Metascript toolbox. So if you install the Metascript toolbox, which comes to us from the Metamancer himself, Timaw, it will load all of these in for you automatically. These are all helpers that are needed in order for the Metascript toolbox to work properly. And the Metascript toolbox is a really great way to manipulate things under the hood within Roll20. It's a great helper library. I've done a bunch of videos on that. I'll put a link down below to one that I did for the Select Manager metamod. Coming down to the second line, Chat Set Atra is used to modify character sheets, which comes to us from Jacob. This is handy if you want to add weapons 
very quickly to a character sheet or if you want to modify things on the sheet like HP or other resources. Token Mod, which comes to us from the Arcane Scriptomancer himself, the Aaron, is a similar thing to Chat Set Atra, except it's token attributes rather than character sheet attributes. Status Info is the mod that's used to apply those status effects that I mentioned earlier. The Dynamic Lighting tool allows you to modify a page's lighting settings programmatically. Turn Marker 1 highlights which token is currently active in combat. Group Init and Group Check, we talked about those a little earlier. They allow you to select a group of tokens and roll initiative or make a check for them. And Apply Damage is used to automatically apply damage to tokens that failed their group check. I've got videos that deal with all of these. I'll put links to those down below. Now, I use a third-party map maker called Dungeon Alchemist, which makes these beautiful maps. This mod lets you import those maps into Roll20 with dynamic lighting already set up. Encounter Helper, which comes to us from Kurt Jagers, is used to quickly show and hide groups of tokens that are part of an encounter. Script cards give you really souped up macro capabilities in Roll20, way more sophisticated than what you can do with just a standard Roll20 language. Token Action Maker, coming to us from Keith Curtis, Kevin, and Brett, will allow you to quickly build out token action menus. Uh, this one, Door Path, you probably wouldn't use a whole lot. This one is used to convert legacy dynamic lighting to the new version. Every now and then, I'll import an older module into one of my games, and this just updates all of the dynamic lighting lines to use the new Doors module, so you probably wouldn't use that one. Concentration is used to apply a marker to a token that's concentrating on a spell, and then if that token takes damage, you get an alert in chat to make a constitution save, so just a nice little reminder so you don't forget that you need to do that. Aura Tint Health Colors will display a colored aura around a token, which represents its health. So green means the token is at full HP or close to full HP. Yellow means you're about half. Red means you're dying. And the color changes as the token's health goes down or up. And then finally, Spawn Default Token comes to us from David M. This one is used to automatically pop tokens onto the battlefield. These are a lot, I realize that, I just went through them very quickly, but like I said, I have videos on all of these, and those videos are down in this video's description, so you can check those out and see what you think. So that's how I structure things when I'm setting up a new campaign. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing. And until next time, folks, have a great day.